interested, tomorrow uh, evening at 7 o'clock, we are in Anne's group worshiping, and I'm going to be teaching um, in uh, Hillside Church in Morton. Is it at the Log Cabin? Log Cabin. Right at the Log Cabin, yeah. Um, we've been there before. We've taught on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We've got some people baptized in the Holy Spirit, some people saved. Uh, talking to some prophecy. I have no idea what we're doing more night, but we're going to be there. <laughs> um, and so if you'd like to join us, it's at 7 o'clock. And it's open house. We can bring as many people as we want. So, amen. So, um, let me tell you what we've been up to. Uh, I've actually had a month at home, which has just been wonderful. Uh, but, uh, now we're here. We are here a month ago. Most of you weren't. Um, it was summer, so that's okay. Uh, next month, just after Thanksgiving, we're going to be in Toronto, in um, uh, Richmond Hill, which is a suburb of Greater Toronto. We are planting a church uh, in amongst the university students at North York University, and um, most of them are of Korean descent who happen to be Kazakhs, and they speak Russian. So we're starting a church on the 13th of October. Um, we have three days of meetings, and uh, it will kick it off. Uh, we also have a church that we've already planted in Montreal for Quebec Russian-speaking people, because there's a whole community of them there. Um, Russian-speaking people are taking over the world. There's 63 Russian-speaking churches in um, Sacramento, California. Some of them are six, seven hundred people. Um, if you go down to Glendale, California, just a uh, suburb of Los Angeles, there's 500,000 Armenians. Isn't that amazing? And they all speak Farsi, and uh, some of the older ones will never learn English, so when you go to the grocery store, you can either speak English or American, not English, it's American, um, or you can speak Spanish, or you can speak Farsi, or you can speak um, Armenian, and they speak all four languages. Um, the world is becoming one all over the world. People are moving and the churches are growing. And so we've got this one starting in Toronto. We have a small one in Montreal already. So God is doing it. Amen. Amen. And we just need to jump in and get involved. And uh, so in November, uh, Austin is coming with me. We're going to do uh, Eastern Russia in the Central Asia section of Russia. Uh, that's by the Ural Mountains. We're going to be at the city of... Uh, Nietzsche Tagil. Tagil is the river. Nietzsche means on the upper bank. So it's a million people in a very old, decrepit, ugly, dirty, falling down city. And then we go about an hour and a half to the east, further into the mountains, and we go to a city called Ekaterinburg. And it's got two million people, and it's all brand new, sparkling clean, and gorgeous so far. And then he's going to fly home, and I'm going to go to a city called uh, Evanavo. And I've been there before, and we're going to be working with the church there for a week. That kind of got added at the end, so it didn't help his timetable any. So, uh, January, uh, Dylan is coming to Kazakhstan with me. Young people need to get into this. Amen? Yeah. Because us older people would like to stay home. <laughs> so, so, God is good. Let me introduce some people who have been with me now since Wednesday. I'm going to ask them to stand up, turn around. We're going to prophesy over them later tonight. Uh, this is Ed and Sheila uh, Wachtel, and they're from Central Ohio. And uh, I feel much at home in their home. We always had supper together or lunch together in their home. Uh, they have a farm. Um, they're both uh, have been school teachers and university people. Um, there's two sons. They're twins. They travel with me overseas, and that's how I got to know them. And they're here just experiencing life and getting to know you and talking to people over early coffee, late coffees. And, uh, and uh, on Monday, they're going to come to uh, Saskatchewan to experience no life. <laughs> so they have a contract. Because <laughs> you have something here that doesn't exist in many other places. Um, tonight, I want to talk about and then we'll prophesy. I'm talking about the new wineskins, because God is doing something seriously new. And I just want to talk first by starting with the parable of the two doors. There was this guy, he was in his 40s, and he was out cutting the grass, and he nicked his foot. And so the fellow went in and showed his wife, and 
She didn't know what to do with the hole in his foot, so she thought anybody would go to the emergency room and get it checked out. So he went down to the hospital, walked through the emergency front room, the front doors of the emergency room, and when he entered, he was greeted by two more doors. One door was marked male, and the other was marked female. So he went through the door marked male. When he got inside, there were two more doors. One was marked under 40, and the other door said over 40. So he walked through the door marked over 40. He found two more doors. One door said upper body, and the other door said lower body. So he took his foot through the lower body door, and when he got through the lower body door, there were two more doors. One was marked internal, and the other door was marked external. So he went through the external door. And inside, there were two more doors. And one was marked serious, and the other was marked not serious. So he walked through the door marked not serious. And he ended up on the parking lot. <laughs> And the man arrived back home, his wife asked him, sweetheart, did they help you? And he said, no, but they sure were organized. <laughs> and that's the church today. We are really organized, but we're not helping a lot of people. We're shuffling them around from one place to another, one place to another, one system to another, and not offering people a great deal of help. We have this brand of Christianity that I call pop Christianity, and the way most churches operate, and the way most churches minister, is not helping as many people as it should or could, if it would just change and function the way God created it to function. So is it organized? Yes. But it's organized religion. And God is into a season now where he's going to teach us not to do church but to be the church. Business as usual is no longer acceptable. So whatever it is you do in your church on Sunday morning or any other day that you're there, it's not acceptable. And God's making some major changes to the wineskin. The wineskin is the church. You can see these changes if you just open your eyes. God not keeping them a secret. They're easy to understand. He's always telling us what he's doing. The Bible states that God always reveals what he's doing ahead of time through his fivefold ministry team, but especially through the prophets. Yeah. Amos chapter 3, and I love this verse, chapter 3, verse 7, the Lord does nothing except without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. And he has been speaking seriously loudly for many decades, three of them that I've been involved in, about the changes he's making to the wineskin today, to the church. And now they're taking place. So he's warned us, he's explained it, he's revealed it, he's showed it to us, it's been written about, it's been studied, it's been analyzed, it's been rejected, it's been accepted, and now it's happening. And we have to make some choices. We can go through the door marked new wineskin, or we can go through the door marked old wineskin. I guarantee, behind the new wineskin door, there's not another door. It won't look well organized. It will look confusing, in fact. But in God's mind, it's exactly how the church should be functioning. There was a group of people back in the early days of the Jewish people, of Jewish religion, and they were known as the sons of Issachar. How many of you heard the sons of Issachar? Well, a few of you read the Old Testament. Sons of Issachar in First Chronicles 12, on the tribe of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Or the Living Bible says, from the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives, all men who understood the timber of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. So they understood what was happening in the culture, in the society, in the world in which they lived, and in the places around them that were surrounding them and other nations that worshipped other gods. But they also knew what God wanted them to do in the midst of 
that culture in the midst of those changes. And that's the, what God has been telling us. This is what is going to happen in your world. And this is what you need to do to change, to impact that world. So you can be the two doors and be a well-organized hospital and do absolutely nothing and have no influence and no impact. So we're all standing on the parking lot one day. <laughs> or we can actually listen to the sons of Issachar, the prophetic voices today. And most of the ones on radio, television, and the internet are not God's prophetic voices. But they do exist. And I want to read to you a prophetic word. Some of you are going to recognize it. It's lengthy. So listen, God said, the church will rise to a whole new level this year. What has seemed impossible in the past will now become the norm. Instead of trying to heal the sick, a supernatural grace will fall on my people and signs and wonders will flow automatically. It will need both the one ministering the healing and the one receiving it to be in utter amazement. Yes. This is my grace, says the Lord. Do not take it for granted, but expect it and cherish it highly. In the eyes of most, many of these ministers will seem unqualified. But did I, the Lord, not say that I would use the weak and foolish things of the world to confound the wise? These unlearned people will come from all corners and take their place in the kingdom of God and their God-given assignments. Be ready to receive them, for they are my choice instruments in these end of days. 